radical. Welcome to this week's episode of the Print on Demand cast. Each week, join the gnarly Travis and Josiah as they provide insight into the print on demand industry and equip you with the totally tubular tools, advice, and strategies you need to achieve success and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. Now, on to this week's totally tubular show. Well, hey, 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 everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Print on Demand cast. Um, I am your host, Travis Ross, and Josiah is actually not here. Um, he is, I think, on a plane right now, actually, um, and he'll be back tonight. He, If you listened last week, he was traveling to Sweden. And if you follow his Instagram, he posted some pretty amazing pictures while he was over there. Um, had a good time with his wife and he's coming back. So I am flying solo today. Uh, and we all know that when Travis flies solo, um, maybe the show doesn't go quite as well because Josiah pushes all the buttons. That's his job. And he does a really good job of it. But I do have... Um, something kind of cool. I was actually at a, a friend's house last night. We were doing a fire night, a kind of a church thing. A um, bunch of guys from the church were over at a guy's house and um, having some really great discussions around, around a couple of campfires. And um, I saw this buddy of mine that I I've known for quite a while and he's a graphic artist and um, a really, really smart when it comes to like all things graphic. Is that a thing? I don't know. Um, but I said, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> and so uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Andy Zenz. Andy is a brand strategist. Um, he's run his own business, Robots Love Balloons, for the last 15 years. He specializes in logo and packaging design with a focus on building a broad brand package of assets that carries and supports the full brand experience. Uh, he's a creative problem solver at heart and loves the strategy and creativity that comes from engaging other people's problems. So let's welcome to the show, Andy Zenz. Andy, how you doing, man? Good. It's good to be here. It's fun that it all came together within, I don't know, less, hours. less than 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you said yes, or otherwise, uh, you know, I would be talking um, to myself or by myself. But uh, yeah, we had we had a, a nice little pre um, pre interview, I guess, and we talked through some of the questions. And I think we've got some uh, cool things um, on the on the uh, the docket here. So, but before we do that, I warned you um, before you came on that every time we have a guest. They have to come prepared with a dad joke. So with that, let's uh, cue the bumper. Time for the weekly dad joke. Yes, that was something dropped on me last minute. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I've been telling dad jokes longer than I've been a dad, but I've been a dad for 18 years. Um, but uh, this is a class. This goes back to when my camp counseling days, actually. But uh, it's mm -hmm. a good table one. So it has props. So it's a salt and pepper shaker. Okay. Um, and so, and it's three parts. So you can just be on the table and you can just be like, hey, what's this, guys? And then you just go, do, 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 do. Um, oh, wait, no, wait. It goes this one. This this is a salt. He's like, da, 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 da. oof, ah, oh. Are you all right? Are you all right? Do you know what that is? Assault. This is Dr. <laughs> Pepper. This is Dr. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Okay. And what is this? Um, I don't know. Changing don't of know. the seasons. Changing of the seasons. Okay. And then the you last got one more. Is another prop. It's like, ah, uh, ah, ah. What is that? That's the assault, right? Assault no, with the deadly weapon. Yeah, assault with the deadly uh, assault with the deadly weapon. Okay, I, I, um, I'm, I'm loving that. Uh, that gets uh, Michael Scott. All right. Um. Okay. So, for your print on demand cast, uh, weekly dad joke. Um, I. I was just reminiscing and, you know, just thinking about my grandfather and 
thinking about, you know, um, I have a pretty big birthday coming up this year and, uh, you know, you start thinking about, I'm probably closer to the end than I am to the beginning. And so I was just thinking when I die, I want to go, I really want to go peacefully in my sleep, like my grandfather, not kicking and screaming like the passengers in his car. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I didn't I, and I, like- Still joking. I was that, like, oh, that was, yes, yes. Oh, no, no, no. And, and I, I do, I still remember the last thing my dad said before kicking the bucket. Uh, he said, son, watch how far I can kick this bucket. So, yeah. There you um, go. there you go. Those are, uh, that's, that's it guys. That's all I got. Um, it's way funnier. I think when Joe is here, he pushes the buttons better than I do. So that's just, um, can laugh here. yeah. So yeah. That's terrible. Oh, well. All right, so let's get into some uh, actual print-on-demand stuff, some um, interview stuff, some good sure. questions and such. So first of all, before we get into it, um, you have a, a company, um, Robots Love Balloons, yep. and uh, and I just wanted to hear kind of your story of how you got into that company, how you started it. Um, your graphic story, since you're not necessarily into print on demand, we usually have people tell their print on demand story, but just tell us your graphic design story and a little bit about yourself. I've dabbled with print on demand, I should say, I confess, and I and I would still <laughs> like to do more. I'd like to do more than dabbling for whatever that's worth. But yeah, I'm a brand strategist. You've, and You've come to the right place, my friend. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm a brand strategist focused on logo package design. Um, and I've kind of done that. I'm I was a fine art major in college, um, but I'm pretty much self-taught in the computer graphics world. So um, Mm -hmm. my college was just starting the program a little late um, when I was in school, like in the late 90s. So, um, but uh, so, but yeah, so I'm self-taught in that, but I love branding and logo design and all that stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. so I've been doing that for over 15 years. Robots Love Balloon is my company name. I got, I, people ask, where'd you get that name from? And it was actually, I just wanted something that was memorable and didn't have my name in it and didn't say design in it or studio <laughs> or something like that. And my right. nine year old niece at the time titled one of her pictures, Robots Love Balloons. And I'm like, can I use that for my business? And so I've been using it ever since. So, um, nice. so yeah, so I, I love working with other people and, and really, the thing that I love about graphic design is there's uh, a problem solving kind of aspect to it. And mm-hmm. so I would say I'm not a real artist. I kind of confess that I'm not a real artist. I can paint. I can take photo- do photography. I can draw and do all those things. But my creative juices sometimes don't necessarily flow independently. Uh, like I feel like real artists just have ideas all the time. And mm-hmm. they just need a way and an avenue to get it out and, and create. I My creativity kind of starts um, going when I hear other people's problems, whatever it might be, you know. So mm-hmm. like uh, I use, I've done murals in the past and it's like other people just have ideas for murals. But I need somebody else's like, hey, we have this space. Here's a theme we're thinking or this is what the people. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that I love is problem solving actually gets my creative juices flowing so cool yeah and um we actually have uh i was trying to pull this up we actually really got to know each other when you were helping me with a uh, particular uh problem i guess um we were coming up with uh some package design for a private label product um we we did a burrito wrap um and the reason we did a burrito wrap is because a uh, burrito blanket was was trademarked <laughs> <laughs> and copyright copywritten. So um let me see if I can pull these up here. Uh and you guys can see them if you're watching on YouTube. Um nope, it doesn't look like it's gonna let me do that. Again, I am not Josiah. But um they they came out really, really cool. They um they looked like a Chipotle box, you know, we had kind of the the wrapper on the bottom and and they had a really fun nutritional facts. Um you know, thing on the back that it was kind of funny, you know, hundred percent polyester, um, 0% corn, 0% flour. And, and most of this was, you know, Andy, it was your kind of 
going back and forth with me and like, Hey, what if we did this? What if we did this? And, um, uh, and it was, it was a fun, fun process. Um, so yeah. So what, I remember I, is you what do you remember to, about that? What I remember is you were able to sell the same product that other people were selling at almost two, if not three times the, uh, the price simply because it all, it came in a package and in yeah. a creative package. And so it went from just being this item blanket by itself to being like a giftable you know thing that's all inclusive and so it was really cool how putting a little bit of thought into the design process and the packaging really made it a stronger product so yeah for yeah. sure um okay well let's uh let's talk a little bit about print on demand you, you said you've dabbled in like some merch you've made some merch and some things like that um but you haven't really jumped in the print on demand game so if at any time this goes too far you can just say you know what i don't know about that but here's what i do know and sure. that's totally fine um so when designing specifically for print on demand or if you had to design specifically for print on demand how do you approach creating your art that's going to look good on like t-shirts, mugs, posters, all of these different things. Is, is that even a thing for a graphic designer? Are you okay making something that you're planning on putting on all kinds of different things? Or are there going to be some like minor corrections or different, you know, kind of the way you, you see something is specific to a specific product or can it go multi-products in your, in your experience? I think there, there are some things that, um, could apply to different, you know, uh, um, you know, objects, you know, whether it's a t-shirt, mm -hmm. a mug, a print, things like that. Um, I think like when I'm building a brand for somebody, mm -hmm. I think, and then when we have a brand and then you move into merch, I think the tendency or the, the downfall that people make is they're like, okay, like a school, for instance, they have a mascot and then they just put it on everything put the same mm -hmm. logo on a hat. I put the same logo on a sweatshirt, same logo on a t-shirt on a lanyard. And there's no creative creativity throughout those. So when I'm building a brand, I'm trying to, um, create items that aren't, don't look like repeats. And so the beauty mm -hmm. of print on demand, I think is you can create a graphic and, or, or, you know, some slogan and you can put it on a mug and you can put it on a t-shirt mm -hmm. and you can let people decide what they want, yeah. where they want to represent that thing when it comes to building. And so, you know, I think we're, this topic will go throughout today when it comes to building a branded uh, concept that I think eventually a lot of print on demand people want to do is you want, I think you want to start thinking about things differently like how mm -hmm. would this design look on a t-shirt versus a mug right a t-shirt is usually just forward facing you know a mm -hmm. mug is round so how do we take that one design that maybe has just an image on the front and on a mug how do we make it so that it kind of wraps around that would be one way just how do you take that mm -hmm. design just a little bit further and um, take advantage of the object that it's on. So I think putting some creative thought into just adjusting your thing a little bit for the mm -hmm. different things will take your print on demand products to a higher level that I don't think many people are thinking about. Yeah. I mean, in our, for our, in my experience, I have done kind of, uh, you know, the, well, I'm going to put this, this design on this, 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 and this. Um, as many products as I can get it on because, uh, you know, it's uh, our strategy has always been um, a mile wide and an inch deep. I, I can see the benefit of that um, really thinking through each individual product um, from a brand perspective. I think that's super important because um, it really can separate you from, like you said, the the brand that just puts their logo on everything. And that's that's the extent of their creativity. There's right. a lot more you can do with um you know a really uh, you know a really nice nike logo for is i mean they've done a ton of different things with their nike logo it's not i mean yeah they might put it on everything but it's not just the logo there's a lot more right. to it than that right right yeah, yeah. and um, i mean i've done some mascots over the years and like 
I, all the t-shirts, you know, maybe they'd be different colors, but they would be one design. And then the long mm -hmm. sleeve t-shirt was a totally different design. Still had the mascot a little bit, mm -hmm. but a different version of it. And then the sweatshirts were something different. And so when you're trying to sell, I mean, that way you get people walking out with potentially a t-shirt, a sweatshirt and a long sleeve because they're all different, mm -hmm. they're all different colors and you're buying yeah. and they're not just like repeated things. So, yeah, no, that's good. Getting that, uh, average cart value up, right. you know, um, that's, that's smart. That's really smart. Um, let's stay on the, the design process kind of for a minute. And can you just walk us through how your design process works? Um, when you have, when you kind of have a clear vision on what you want to design, what, what does that look like? What do you do from there? Um, uh, I, you know, it is a lot related to how it's going to be used. Um, I I prefer working on my iPad for these days over clicking with a mouse. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, those don't always translate easily to print on demand. I uh, usually have to, you know, outline your graphic because it's uh, um, bit um, pixels in Mm -hmm. procreate and then you have to move it to vector or you know or whatever um graphics for um print on demand but uh it's a lot of exploring like i have a sketchbook that i just explore ideas really so it's not, sometimes i don't know what i want to do and so it starts mm -hmm. in my sketchbook always it's it's like i have a phrase or a, an idea a theme and then i just sketch and sketch and sketch until i get a good idea that i feel like could work in a design um, when i do merch um again it's like how do i i love pushing the limits of expectations of like everything fitting just within a sh short little thing i like to create you know i've done merch where the main object is here and then just it just something is up over off to the side you know just to just draw your attention just it almost feels like it's breaking out of some box you know it's all within mm. the printable space that print on demand yeah. can do but if you kind of you know use your space creatively it's just like oh you know it almost looks like an extra print like oh did you pay extra to get over here no that's all still within the you know mm -hmm. the printable space so it's fun to just always see how you can push the limits of you know your canvas of whatever you're printing on or whatever you're working towards. So well, yeah. I'm always like, that's my biggest thing is like, how do I push the limits? How do I make it interesting? Mm. So it doesn't sound like you have like, um, a, a one size fits all process for creating it's, it's your creativity is creative in its expression. It seems like, <laughs> yeah, it seems to be that way. It's like, yeah, it's whatever we're designing and that's where graphic design or brand I, maybe even i need some more specific branding you know or mm -hmm. what because you're you're trying to create things that are creating a feeling emotion i i mean you can do that in graphic design whatever but yeah it's like to what end am i designing you know is it for a t-shirt or is it for packaging is it for yeah. a billboard or is it for uh a little icon that's going to go on the corner somewhere so it just you really have to, it's really based on wherever. So that's where maybe I'm a little different than another sure. artist or whatever, something like that. So. Sure. So um, what are some like mistakes that you see people make when they're creating art for specifically for print on demand? Like for instance, you're walking through the mall or, you know, down Pearl street or something and you see somebody that they've got a t-shirt on and, and it just makes you cringe. Why are you cringing when you see that? Like, what are some of the things that you're like, Oh man, that could have been so much better if they had only what? Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't think about with their designs and I cringe and, it, uh, you know, consistently on is um, a design is often created usually either on like a white background or a white piece of paper with a dark marker or or dark graphics right and then mm -hmm. they put it on a dark t-shirt and then they just reverse it and so right 
And the reverse doesn't always work. Like, a, you know, mm. something that was made for a white background with dark text, usually like words and stuff like that, that's fine. But it moves into like anything that might have eyes or like face, you know, um, mm -hmm. like some of these graphics where it's an animal or something like that. If you take it and you reverse it, then all of a sudden the pupils are usually white. And then um, <laughs> the, you know, the, the whites of the eyes are black, for instance, like, and it just looks like a negative, you know, thing. And it's just like, I hate when people don't put any thought into like, oh, this is going to be reversed and they're going to have to adjust the graphic to mm -hmm. accommodate. Or if they don't have the time to do that, just figure out how to put it on a, you don't have to put it on a white t-shirt, but just put it on a, a dark print on a lighter t-shirt, you know, is a simple mm -hmm. way. You know, and so those always make me cringe is when they haven't put any thought into the reversing of a graphic. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, that's one. And then anything, just another, anything else? Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say to that? Did you have, I was thoughts? just going to ask, no, I was just going to ask if you have any other ones like that. Uh, just, like you know, just the lack of creativity in, um, in just, you know, simply it's either black on a, on, light shirts and, or white on dark shirts you know it doesn't make me cringe but when you're starting if you're wanting to build a good design i feel like just put a little thought into it if you're going to put it on a blue shirt it doesn't have to be a white print why don't you use like a, a like a light blue on a dark blue shirt and all of a sudden it's um mm. not you know it's just there's a little bit more interest to it there's just a little bit more theme um and then if you're going to change the shirt and put it on you know so i think you can most people could put a little bit more thought into not just simply using black on light shirts mm -hmm. and white on dark shirts like do yeah. tonal stuff you know would be yeah. a really good thing and then the other the other thing I, we talk a lot about here is you don't have to use every color of t-shirt you know oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can design for a specific color like if it looks good on brown just do a brown shirt you don't have to do green and red and blue and all these other colors well that i sort of go yeah so just because you can yeah that's like the canvas like the the t-shirt colors right you know mm -hmm. um, yeah like don't do all the t-shirts because not all of them are that it's not going to look the same but also the the beauty of print on demand is you can mm -hmm. use your color palette is endless there like when you print like um screen printing you pay per color usually right right and yeah so for run and so you're usually limiting it and you're and and all and our eyes and our appreciation have actually kind of gotten used to seeing uh, graphics because most t-shirts have limited when there was all screen printing had limited color palettes because mm -hmm. of the limitation of colors. And so we're kind of used to that and we actually kind of like that. And so the, uh, colors are limitless and print on demand because you're not, you're just paying for the print. You're not paying for right. the amount of colors, but just because you can use every color in the rainbow doesn't mean you should. So mm -hmm. still consider how to make, limited color palettes you know of of your of your designs i think having one or two colors you know or like two or three colors max is is ideal and like how do they complement each other and how do they look yeah you know maybe you want to only you print on like uh what earth tone shirts mm -hmm. you know if you're going to use those printed colors right for instance so yeah can, I, I don't know to things and i don't think a lot of print on demand people are necessarily thinking to that level of how do i create yeah. something special yeah i think um i am confident that there are uh tons and tons of websites out there that will give you color palettes you know hey here's if you want to have your canvas be light blue here are two colors that'll go with it. here are three colors that'll go here are four colors that'll all go with that and you can use some of that in your creative expression i don't know do you have just off the top of your head i know this isn't in the questions or anything do you have like websites that you go to or is that kind of a learned thing that you've learned after you know being so uh 15 years plus in the industry um there's adobe uh i think it used to be cooler with a k 
Uh, hmm. But it's now, I think, it, Adobe. I think if you just search Adobe Color, they have a website um, that kind of shows you colors that go well together. And if you pick one color, you know, you can, they'll give you a bunch of other colors that go with it. So oh, that's cool. To limit your color palette. And even though they usually always suggest like six colors, I think five or six colors, but you, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of want to pick from that. It's like, okay, most, you, I could find a t-shirt in one of these colors that, you know, they suggest, and then mm -hmm. okay, these other colors could go with it, you know, but that would be one, but yeah. Limit your color palette, cool. but make a interesting color palette is, yeah. or is key. I'll see if I can find that uh, website and I'll throw it in the show notes for you guys. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move into uh, I think a really interesting topic: quality versus quantity. Um, because as we discussed before the show, a lot of print-on-demand sellers, um, myself included, we've gone the quantity route, and so we want to make as many designs as possible um, for as cheap as possible, and put them on as many things as possible. Um, and there's a there's an obvious advantage to that because when you can be everywhere, people are going to eventually see your stuff. And even if it's not the greatest stuff, there's a certain percentage of people that are going to be attracted to it and probably buy it from you. Um, so the idea behind that is be everywhere. But you have kind of well, I'll actually tell a story. Um, yesterday, before I went to the event that I uh, saw Andy at, I was actually um, putting together a list of, I had 200 professions, um, you know, actor, artist, barista, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I had, um, I created like a hundred different phrases. Okay. And so my idea is to put all of these phrases or put the professions in all of these phrases. So, you know, when you're done, you've got like 2000, is that 2000? No, it's 20,000. You have 20,000 phrases that you can then put on all kinds of things. And, and so I was actually, I had done it with one of them. So I had one phrase with 200, um, uh, 200 professions. And then I used Canva's bulk create. I found a really cool graphic. I tested it, made sure everything was going to fit. And I literally just hit go and bam, I had 200 images a PNG, right. You know, the correct size for the print file that, you know, for the company that I'm going to use to print these things. And, and, um, all I have to do now is create the listings, which I'm going to do again with a spreadsheet because that's how we do things. It's all bulk. Um, so that's an example of quantity. You yes. have a different perspective on that this whole thing. Stomach. I know. I was going to say, are you that's cringing so right like, now, Andy? Oh, cringe. You know, <laughs> Uh, but like, that's what you need to do for print on demand sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and so I, so you thrive in the quantity realm. I get, I get bogged down in the quantity realm be, and I get bogged down in, in quality. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, people are constantly telling me, just put it out there. Andy. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. It's and good so enough. Yeah. Skills sometimes. Um, of like, I can make this better. So my own skills are keeping me from putting out quantity, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, I want I want quality. So somewhere in the middle, I feel like there could be some good um, balance of quantity versus quality. But for what you're doing is, what you might find out is, oh, that thing is, you know, I'm really getting traction in this one particular area. Right. Mm -hmm. You were trying to get traction in a phrase rather than a niche. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, a, um, a, a, a profession. And yeah. so but if you found out that that profession, you're getting a lot of traction in, then you may want to go into more quality of mm -hmm. uh, products within that niche. And so and that's when you can start building what I what I work best in is building a brand. Right. Yeah. And so instead of just building a one off product, I'm interested in making quality brands. And and so brands come with more quality than quantity. I feel like, you know, a curated mm -hmm. set of things 
that eventually you keep growing and putting out new things every year and things like that or every season. But mm -hmm. um, it's less about hitting just everything and finding ways to kind of like focus. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, uh, I need to loosen up on my quality and maybe occasionally you or another print on demander needs to consider um, loosening up on quantity and start honing in on quality. Yeah. You know, kind of yeah. I think this is, you know, um, I was on, uh, a, a podcast, another podcast with a print on demand podcast, and they specifically do brand. And we had this same discussion, you know, and I think, you know, there are positives, there's pluses and minuses to both strategies, because with the one, with the way I've done it, you're, you're probably going to get a sale relatively quickly, you know, um, with, uh, a brand approach, you're going to have fewer designs, most likely, which means you have fewer products. Also, nobody necessarily knows your brand at the beginning. So there's a lot of marketing that has to go in to make, to create awareness. If you're starting from scratch, of course, if you have a following already, it's a different story, but if you're starting from scratch, it's going to take a while to, to build, a, you know, a, a fan base, if you will, or, you know, a, a group of people that would potentially buy it. Um, it's going to take a lot of marketing and um, probably even some ad dollars and things like that um, before you even make your first sale. The, the other, but the other side of that is that um, that brand is kind of infinitely scalable. If it catches on, if you do it the right way, you can continue to build and build and build and build um, with repeat customers um, where the way that we've done it with the quantity, that's not a thing. Like nobody comes to my store because, you know, well, that's not true. Some it's very small percentage of people that will come back and buy something that will remember the store. They just looked for the product. It had the funny thing on it. That was the perfect gift for that one occasion. And the next time they need a gift from an occasion, they're not coming back to me. They're coming to Amazon search bar. And if I happen to be in that search, I get it. But there's no, you know, lifetime value of a customer for the most part with the uh, with selling in quantity on multiple platforms and all that stuff. Um, so there's there's like this kind of balancing act between the two. And they're, they're both very viable uh, business opportunities. And um, you can make both of them work, but it, they're they're really kind of different. You know, they're almost in the same industry. They're completely different. You know, the way you go about yeah. those businesses. I mean, you you wouldn't have an individual website with all twenty thousand of those options right. posted, but yeah. you can upload all twenty of those options into Amazon. And when somebody types in ballerina. And mm -hmm. that was one of the professions that your T-shirt, that one T-shirt that with that one phrase will show, should show up, hopefully. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so it's a different platform. It's like they don't know that you have 20,000 versions of these. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that they could have all these other different ballerina shirts that just have text on them either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah um, they'll see that but yeah so yeah yeah it's an interesting thing so i yeah. love quality and that's my and so sure. yeah um do you have any tips for making artwork really pop you know for print on demand product we were talking about like there are no color limitations but you should have color limitations or should make yourself have color limitations are there any other tips that you can think of um to like make your product stand out? Um, I, you know, I mean, yeah, color was that one, um, like considering color and how it's used um, mm -hmm. and the limitations of that. And then I think simplicity is usually always your friend um, in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. Um, what do you mean by simplicity? Um, in the print on demand world, um, I feel like a just, you know, text seemed to work really well, you know, and then like mm -hmm. they're, you know, just bold sans serif kind of fonts, you know, block fonts are mm -hmm. helpful. Um, or, you know, so like going back to my, my, my fine art background, and the elements of design, like from college days, like those were my favorite classes in college. 
taught by Mr. Bippus. Shout out to you, Mr. B. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, he, we talked about the elements of design. And so once I learned the elements of design, then I'm like, oh, well, hmm. I'm always wanting to use those to like manipulate the experience. So, you know, just, a, you know, a flat line, it suggests rest, a vertical line suggests strength, a horizontal line suggests mm. movement, you know, and then when with composition, you know, you can balance out one big block of object up here with um, small, a, a group of objects down here. And so you start thinking about composition. And I don't think a lot of people think about composition too much with print mm -hmm. on demand. You know, again, it goes, it's just yeah. like, oh, this is just going to go here. But like, how do you create tension? Right. Like, how do you create, you know, do you have an all black and white graphic with just a hit of red? Right. You know, it's just somewhere mm. in the corner or something. And it's like that creates interest or tension or like a focus. Those, I think, is the difference mm. between that's what I think make good design. And but I think, correct me if I'm wrong like print on demand and a lot of mugs and t-shirts it isn't about a good design it's just about like do you have the right, a good phrase you know or theme and so mm -hmm. again um it's depends on what you're building i know there's a lot of print on demand people out there who are wanting to build brands um yep. there is a lot and they use mm -hmm. print on demand at that early stage um yeah. you know thing um but uh so, but yeah, just consider, consider, how, you know, composition is, is great. You know, like instead of just having words like over may, maybe the top with like a cute little picture of a dog, right. You mm -hmm. know, whatever it might say, like consider maybe making the words like larger and then the dog overlapping it, you know, for instance, would mm -hmm. be just, mm -hmm. it's better composition versus like, you know, arched lettering and then a graphic you know so yeah i feel like just figure out how do you you know i've seen this done before how can i do it differently and so no that's i think that's super interesting the whole composition idea because um i i you know i'm a creative person you know i'm a musical background and all of that stuff but i'm not necessarily creative when oh well i haven't studied the art side of my creativity um so i'm kind of like one of those people that i can go oh that that's a really good design or oh that's a really bad design but i couldn't tell you why and and i think um as as people who uh, are graphic designers um i think they have kind of that benefit of understanding composition understanding like why things are the way they are or should be or you know should be the way they should be um, when they're designing and, and it, it will give them a potential leg up on, you know, the competition, the guys like me who just, you know, go, that looks good. All right, cool. It's done. You know, I, I have no problem with the little curved thing with the dog in the middle, you know, I'm, that looks yeah. good. Okay. But there is a better way to do it. And you're saying, um, composition might be, you know, a nice little YouTube rabbit hole for somebody to go down and just try to get a little bit of understanding of that as they're building their proud demand brand. Are there right. any other uh, resources yeah. that you can think of? What's that? Any other resources that you can think of? Like, I mean, aside from just the, the YouTube thing or, or maybe other uh, things that they should include in their YouTube rabbit hole search. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, yeah, the, the idea of composition, I mean, it's, big in photography for sure you're probably going to find mm. if you just google composition and you know uh you'd want to probably composition of design or composition composition for graphic design you yeah. know or um even um typography composition mm. right would be some things um to look into um but it's, yeah um yeah, those would be areas to start to dig into. But yeah, like when, you know, going back to kind of what we say, a lot of the platforms are for the search, you go on to Amazon, you search, you know, cute dogs, and then you still are in, you are in comp competition with other people who've made t-shirts and right. cute dogs. And so if you put a little thought into your composition, you could stand out because, oh, that's, mm -hmm. 
breaks away from the norm of the half arch lettering with the little graphic, right? Or whatever. So yeah, totally. So, yeah. Well, speaking of um, great design, um, I don't feel like I can have a graphic designer on the channel without asking them a really tough, difficult question. And uh, so here it goes, Andy. You know what it is. How do you see AI affecting the graphic design world? It's not affecting it yet. It's okay. going to affect it soon. I think... Um, it's, it's coming, coming fast and both, I think the two areas of concern of professions is writing and, and design that, mm -hmm. that AI seems to really be infiltrating, um, off the bat, mm -hmm. but just like in the writing, it's a starting place, but you still have to curate what's being done and you kind of put right. a little light into it, put a human touch to it. And right now with graphic design, it depends on what it's being used for. There's some amazing stuff out there that are very like art focused, like um, AI generated stuff, but would never work mm -hmm. for brands right the ai mm -hmm. generated branding stuff is pretty cheesy pretty mm -hmm. low quality and it's just like it might be like oh okay i could see where i could use my professional skill and make that better um mm -hmm. but um i don't see it happening it's just like but like this very artistic painterly kind of like graphic stuff what doesn't work for brand but it could work for you know, just a t-shirt or something like that. And, but mm -hmm. all confession, like I've avoided it. I'm like this old guy, this old dog, not wanting to learn new tricks. <laughs> and so, uh, I haven't touched it, but I know it's, it's infiltrating and we need to know how to use it. But, um, implementation and use is still going to be a lot of where the, where the person, you know, comes in and experience and stuff like that. Yeah. So, it's there. You got to, you got to yep. admit it's there and it ain't going it. anywhere. That's for sure. Right. So I probably need to learn how to use it. Um, one day I will. So. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So, uh, we have officially reached the point in the show where we like to ask you certain questions that we ask every guest on the show. We call this segment the magic question. So let's roll the bumper. And Disney has not come after us yet. And so knock on wood, we're good there. Um, all right. So first magic question for you, Andy Zenz. Tell us about a time something happened in your business that felt like a complete and total failure. Oh, uh, I'm good at finding all the failures. Um, <laughs> that's Are we all? Sometimes I express, I have a, I have like a mentor, business mentor now, and I'm like, oh, I'm failing all this. And then he's like, let's just re, re, you know, cover everything you've done. I'm like, oh, wow, I've done a lot. So, uh, that, that in my business, that feels like a failure. I mean, print my print on demand, like, you know, efforts, you know, I wanted, <laughs> I remember year, it was years ago, like I wanted to get up a shop going and one Thanksgiving, I decided to do that. And the, really the thing that worked the best for me was that my daughter, who was probably 12 at the time was like, I'll do it with you, dad. Like, I'm like, I just need somebody to do this with. I don't know. And so she sat with me and over uh, Thanksgiving break, we like up, like worked on uploading a Shopify site, linking a print on demand and just having her there, like to be like, what color should we print this on and stuff like that. It was just super fun, but it died. So, uh, <laughs> I just put any, I just couldn't put the time or got, I, you know, probably my own design, um, I wanted it to be perfect or whatever. And, you know, uh, yeah, I lost the interest of, or I just, the, the demand was for other things. So I would say that's a big fail and it's one that I want to, I want to grow again. So we need to probably talk more than we do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would enjoy that. I would enjoy that. All right. So, um, 
here's another one. Um, I'm going to save that one. Okay. So if you had to start all over and lost all your current contacts, what would you do first to I'm, build your I'm, business back? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure there's things you can do online, you know, and to get things going again, but, um, I love like personal networking. I love showing up. I just showed up to, a, you know, a networking event last week in, in the area. I tell people, you got to get out of your office. You got to be connecting with people. You got to be showing up to your, your niches and places that yeah. you want to be. So if you, if you are building a brand, going back to like the cute dog stuff, show up at dog parts with your shirts and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, whatever you're doing, you gotta be networking and networking can be done in different mm -hmm. ways, but connecting, like reaching out to people on LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever, and just, mm -hmm. you got to, and I'm kind of in that stage again, cause I had a full-time retainer for a couple of years. So I'm like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta connect with people again. So, <laughs> um, so it's networking and getting out like no one else is going, I'm not going to meet anybody else in my house. So you have to right. get out and put yourself out there and meet people, I think. So cool. All right. Last one. Um, and this is the crystal ball question. So, uh, we're going to put on our little turban, stare into the crystal ball. And, uh, Andy, what do you think the future of print on demand is what does it look like i you know i think it's hopeful i mean i think the next stage of print on demand is probably like i mean it can only get better like better quality like i would love mm -hmm. to get when I, like I said, I would love to take a design for my iPad that I did with all the textures and stuff like that and, and then put it on, onto a print on demand, but there's this glow, this haze around all mm. the, all the lines and I haven't figured out. And so you have to just, you know, vectorize it, which then loses a lot of the texture a lot of the times I feel like. So, but, um, better quality I think is just going to happen, but, I mean, like the stuff that people are making with music these days, it's everything is in their own studio. Right. And I think mm -hmm. print on demand, it's just going to be personal, you know, printers, I think it are going to be more accessible. I feel like in the future where you can just do your own printing, whether people want to do that, it's nice that you can ship off a design and then have, mm -hmm. have people print it and ship it. So, but, you know, I think, it's it's sticking around it's just i hope better quality is just the future um more sublimated kind of stuff would be great print on demand sublimation versus um um and maybe it's out there maybe i don't know but uh versus, well, there's a lot of products you can sublimate for sure yeah uh, yeah oh yeah true there is sublimation print on demand yeah mm -hmm. so, so yeah it's out there it's just good stuff okay well cool um so we're going to wrap up. We're going to land the ship here. Um, before we do, why don't you tell people where they can find you and uh, connect with you and, you know, chat if they have other questions or want to get in touch with you. Yeah. I mean, oh man, well, uh, I'm a, one of those shoe cobblers that makes great shoes, but none of my kids have shoes, you know, kind of thing. So I have a website. It's, you know, I haven't updated in a long time. Uh, Robotsloveballoons.com. I, uh, more updated, you know, stuff is on Instagram, you know, at, at robots love balloons. Um, and then you could reach out to me, DM me and like, you know, Instagram or something like that. But just, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just give my personal email, I guess, just Andy Zenz, Z E N Z at Gmail. You can meet me, you can reach out to me and ask me any questions or whatever as well. So, um, cool. so Yeah. I'll put all that in the show notes, except for your email. Cause that would be weird. Um, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, guys reach out to him and, uh, Andy, are you on Facebook? I am on Facebook. Yeah. Um, okay, just, cool. not, not as, not as robots love balloons, but yeah. Um, but maybe I'll add you to our group too. Um, okay. our, fa our print on demand cast group too. Um, okay, cool. Well, uh, I guess you just get to sit here and listen to me do kind of the ending thing, but, um, First of all, thank you so much, um, Andy, for 
being a last minute guest and making this a lot more fun for me, at least. I hope it was fun for our listeners. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, hopefully Josiah will be back with me next week. We'll, he'll be able to push buttons and it won't be so, I don't know, it'll have more fun things. I don't know. What do you, what do you want from me? Um, but if you do like our show, please uh, rate and review it on iTunes or I guess Apple Podcasts, I guess they're calling it, or wherever else you get it. We're on Spotify, Google Podcasts, um, just all the usual suspects. We do have a Facebook group. If you go to printondemandcast.com slash Facebook, it'll take you right there, slash Instagram, slash YouTube. You can check all that stuff out. And then, of course, just printondemandcast.com. You can go there. You can sign up for our monthly newsletter and get a free annual design calendar, which will kind of forecast for you what designs you should be making for the specific events and seasons and holidays that are coming up it'll just kind of keep you on track a little better uh that's free if you sign up for our weekly newsletter and you get an extra weekly dad joke in the newsletter so i mean like win-win right so um and if you don't like social media you can email us at info at printondemandcast.com i uh, love to get emails from you guys we just had a mailbag um episode last week answering some questions so if you've got questions or just want to connect that way you can do that as well i think that may be it. I'm not sure. Uh, Andy, do you have any final words of inspiration or anything else that you'd like to say to the print on demand cast metaverse? Uh, it was just great to be here. Great to talk. Um, uh, I love, I love brainstorming ideas. Just keep it up. Don't let it, don't let your dreams die, you know, uh, and, <laughs> you know, uh, just, uh, keep trucking along. I think, you know, so, yeah. Love it, man. Love it, man. Thanks for being on the show. And uh, until next week, I'm Travis, and this is the Print On Demand cast. We'll see ya. Hey, babe. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. We hope you enjoyed the Totally Tubular show. If you've got a question or a suggestion for the show, send Travis and Josiah an email at info at printondemandcast.com. Want to be wicked nice? Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss next week's episode. See you next time for sure.